here this morning, uh, second Sunday of Easter, to our morning service. Welcome to 1203 Pine Street in Delmar, Maryland, where you are truly being very young as a pastor. Certainly we come this morning with one thing and one thing in mind, and that is to praise the Lord Amen. and to worship Him in the beauty of holiness. So we invite you this morning to join in with us and celebrate Jesus Christ this morning. We are so happy to be here with you another Sunday where we realize that it didn't have to be this way. Uh, but we thank God that he blessed us, yes. that he showered us yes. with his grace and his mercy, and he allowed us to assemble ourselves here to look on each other's face one more time. Yes. So we don't take it for granted. We're thankful to God yes. for this privilege, yes. this gift of life, that yes. we are here this morning yes. to celebrate our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Yes. Our sermon words read as thus. Do not fear your doubts. Mother Teresa, John, of the cross and other spiritual giants were tormented by doubt during their flying. Doubt is a pathway to a deeper, richer faith, a faith where we can say with confidence, my Lord, my God. Thank God. If you're able, will you stand and the choir gives us our opening? <laughs>
Father, we come to you with our plea for forgiveness, and we repent of our sins. <coughs> Father God, we come to you for comfort through these unprecedented times. Touch our hearts and spirits, God. You are wonderful, marvelous, and glorious. Come, Holy Spirit. For we desire that you would bless us. We commend our spirits, commend our spirits to you. Ever loving God and our care. We ask you, Father God, that you continue your love and protection and guidance as we go from day to day. Bless Pastor Young. Go your chosen vessel in all his endeavors. For we know there is power in the blood and hearing the word of God and being preached by our pastor. We ask you, Father God, your blessings on our congregation and those in our prayer list. We ask, Father God, that you heal Sister Lillian Kenny. Yes, presently in the hospital. Yes, but we believe that all these things are possible to them that believe. Yes, we desire our life to be restored and blessed. Our confidence is in you, Father God, for your ways are higher than ours. Yes. We ask all these blessings in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Since the days 
of your ancestors, you had sworn my laws and failed to obey them. Now return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God? Yes, you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me at a time and offering due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into your store so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. Yeah. I will pour a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Amen. Try it. Try it. Let me prove it to you. tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he 
Lord has yes. been so good to you. Yes. Yes. He brought you from a mighty long way. Yes. That's why you're grateful. Yes. That's why you can sing praises this yes. morning yes. to yes. our God. So yes. Praise oh, God. Yes. You're so grateful. Yes. Sister yes. Rose yes. Uh, will you give us another selection this morning? Yeah, yeah. This morning, praise God. We're, we're getting in the mood. We're, we're just getting, we're on our way. Amen. 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 Say amen. Amen. Amen.
be God. Yes, yes, yes. Nothing but the right Jesus. Nothing but the pure spirit shall see the Lord. Yes, yes. We praise God this morning for music and ministry. We praise God for the choir. We praise God for their obedience and to come and bring to us the gospel in song. Praise God. I love you. We praise God and we give honor to God this morning and to all of you in your respective places. We honor and praise God for you, you and you this morning. Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength, my redeemer. Lord, let this not be a good sermon, but a sermon that will do some good. We ask all this in your name, in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask if you have your sword with you this morning. Turn to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, and we will read you from Malachi 3, 7 to 10, and as a reference, we're using the Gospel of Matthew 23, 23, and uh, I am reading from King James, and I ask that you keep your mind chapter, and I got it from verse 8. If you have your, if you have the King James, it reads, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? My beloved God's people. fail to obey his word. <clears throat> when they refuse to obey his word in regard to giving, we're going to be quiet this morning. I know. But it's okay. It's okay. And some of you, uh, I know you might say, uh, perhaps, listen at the preacher, listen at it. He's gone now from this morning. The question is, how is your giving? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Draw your feet in or sit there. I don't know. Or look the other way. Nobody would know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> giving is often defined. It is often defined in the Christian more than one occasion, Jesus links a person's giving to eternal life. Yeah. So now when you remember when Zacharias, you remember the wealthy tax collector, 
when he finally got it right. He finally got it right mm -hmm. with God. His first recorded words were, Behold, Lord, if half of my possessions I'll give to the poor, yeah. and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I'll give it back to them. Yeah. Four, four. Yeah. You'll find this in Luke 19, around, right around verse 8. His salvation immediately touched his pocketbook. Mm -hmm. Touched his bank account. Mm -hmm. Jesus confirmed this formerly greedy man's conversation mm -hmm. by saying to this man, today, mm -hmm. not tomorrow, not next year, but he said, today, mm -hmm. salvation uh -huh. has come to this house. Yes. 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 Compare that with the tragic account of the rich young ruler. You remember he came running to Jesus. Not walking. He came running to Jesus. And he asked him, he said, good teacher, a good master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah. And what an opportunity to witness. Today one might say, just invite Jesus into your heart. Or you've often heard me say, Read Romans 10 and 9. Just invite Jesus into your heart. But this is not what Jesus said. He knew that the man had an idol. So he said one thing. He didn't go all over the place. He just told a man, he said, one thing you like. Just one thing. Go and sell all of your possessions and give them to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And after you've done that, then you can come and follow me. But the scripture tells us that the man went away grieved. He went away heavy hearted. He went away so sad. Unwilling to obey Jesus' words. And Jesus didn't run after him and say, How about my ten? Or how about my percent? Brother, he said to his disciples, You read it in Mark 10. He said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who are wealthy. To enter into the kingdom of God. Now he didn't say it was impossible. Yeah. But he said it would be hard. For the wealthy. To enter. Into the kingdom of God. So if we're talking about. Will a man rob God. Then just what is tithing? Tithing is a term. Commonly used today. To mean setting aside a certain amount of one's income, money, <laughs> make it plain, so yeah. money, we're talking about the green stuff, yeah. Yeah. not the jingle jingle, but we're talking about the green stuff. <laughs> Set aside for God. And typically, uh, a tithe refers to, you you know, a tenth of one's income, because the word literally means tenth. Yeah. It's often generalized to mean any amount that's set aside for God. And this is from your gross. 
10 cents of, 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 of every dollar, uh, uh, you can't get a better rate. Yeah. <laughs> and this rate, not, not only have you got an excellent rate, but the rate comes with a promise. Yeah. Come on now. Read your text. The race comes with a promise. Yeah. Not only does it come with a promise, but it has a guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get no better than that. Uh, come with a guarantee. For he reads that on, on further in the text, he said, test me in this. Yeah. This is this is one, yeah. one passage where, where God said, you can test me. Put me to the test. Yes, right, Says the Lord God Almighty. Uh -huh. And if you put me to the test, uh -huh. if you try me, yeah. see if I will not open up the floodgates of heaven. Yeah. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven uh -huh. and I'm going to pour you out a blessing uh -huh. that you won't be able to receive. Amen. Amen. And that not only is he going to bless you, uh -huh. but he's going to prevent uh -huh. the pest from devouring yeah. what you have. Yeah. He's going to prevent the thief yeah. from coming in uh -huh. and stealing uh -huh. what you have. Yeah. Yeah. And then in Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew 23, 23, if you look at Matthew 23 and 23, you'll read it reads as though it says, Woe unto you scribes, you scribes and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. Now, the word says it, not me. <laughs> For you pay a, a, a tithe of mint, and I, and I, nice, I might pronounce it wrong, but it's A N I S E in the King James Version, which means uh, it's, a, it's an herb. Is an herb or a seed or, or, or oil they used it to, to make medicine. That's what it is. And then it says, uh, a coming, a C U M I N, you see, in the human, in your, in your King James. And that's a spice. And it's made uh, uh, of seed like fruits. And he said, and, but you have omitted, you've omitted the weight of the matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. Those are you strain at the gannet and swallow a, a camel. So it's possible, my beloved, to obey the details of the laws, but still be in disobedience to our general in our general behavior. For example. We could be very precise and faithful about giving our 10% of our money to God. But then we refuse to give one minute of our time in helping others. Yes, tithing is important. But paying tithe does not exempt us from fulfilling God's other directives. And that is what Jesus is teaching here mm -hmm. in Matthew 23 and 23. Keep your Bibles open mm -hmm. and flip over to Proverbs. We'll look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 through 10. Flip over to Proverbs chapter 3, 9 through 10. And if you miss it, go on Facebook and you can pull it up and you can read it again. If you don't have it, if you don't have it written down. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits. Not the second fruits. Said the first, somebody say first fruit. The first fruits of all thy crops. So shall Thy barns be filled with plenty. Yeah. You're going to lack nothing. Yeah. You're going to lack nothing. You're going to lack no thing. No good thing. You're going to lack nothing. You will lack nothing. You will have plenty. And thy presses shall burst mm. out mm. with new 
why. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah. Many people, not anyone at you, but many people <laughs> like to give God their leftovers. Yeah. If they can afford it to donate anything, they'll do so. Yeah. But if they can't afford it, they say, "Well, I can't afford it." But you, yeah. you, 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 you can't, you, you can't be God giving, yeah. and you can't afford not uh, to right. do it. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Now, these people may be sincere and contribute willingly, mm -hmm. but their attitude, yeah. nonetheless, is backward. Yeah. It's better to give God the first part mm -hmm. of our income. Uh -huh. Because when we give him the first part of our income, this demonstrates mm -hmm. that God is our God and not our possessions. Uh -huh. Not our bank account. Uh -huh. Not what we ride in. Uh -huh. Not where we live. But God. has first place. He has first place. He, he won't settle for any other place. He's not a second place God. He will not settle for any other place other than first place in our lives. And after all, our resources, all that we have, belongs to him. We are only managers, caretakers of God's resources. So don't get big-headed and think that it's all yours. It's mine anyway. I work for it. Well, how did you get the health and strength to work for it? Who gave you the health and strength? Come on, somebody. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. It was God that woke you up this morning. It was God that started you on your way. It was God that put the pet in your step. It was God that lifted you up. It was God that went to your sick room. And laid his hands on your body. So when you give to God first, when you give to him first, my beloved, it helps us to conquer that greed that is within. It helps us to properly manage God's resources that he has so richly blessed us with. We can manage it better now. And it opens us up. We're not only able to manage it better, but guess what? It opens God's windows for us to get special. Do you realize that God has something special just for you and I? He has special blessings that our eyes have not seen, that our, our ears have not heard, that our minds cannot even comprehend. He has special blessings. Stored up. For his people. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So it's important, my beloved, that we discipline ourselves in time. If you do it, if you discipline yourself, then God won't have. Because he will do it. Well, wouldn't you rather do it? I think you'd be better if you did it than God did it. How do you think people become successful in their family life, in business, and in athletics? They, they, they accomplish it by, by hard work. And not only hard work, but constant discipline. Mm -hmm. They discipline themselves. The Christian life is much the same. Some people think, think that it takes too much work. But achieving anything on this planet, that work is worthwhile, is going to require 
Oh, good word. Yes. Yes. You, you don't just get it on, on flowery beds of ease. Well. It's going to require hard work. Yes. Being a Christian is not a shortcut mm -hmm. to an easy life. Mm -hmm. It's not a shortcut. Mm -hmm. It's a hard road. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy road. When we reach, well, when we search for wisdom, working hard at living as God asks, you discover that no worldly success, nothing in this world can compare with the joy, with the joy of knowing God, with the joy of serving God. Yeah. With the joy of giving to God, yeah. there is nothing that can compare. Moreover, yeah. he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests to the priests and the Levites, that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. One more text. Go to 2 Chronicles 31. 2 Chronicles 31, 4 through 5. And it reads as thus. Say amen if you found it. Amen. 2 Chronicles 31, verse 4 and 5. And it reads, moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites that they might be encouraged, that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. And as soon as he commanded, came abroad, the children of Israel brought in Abundance, the first fruits of corn, of wine, of oil, and honey, and all and of all the increase of the field, and the tithe of all things brought them in abundantly. Oh, praise the Lord! In this text, Hezekiah resisted the practice or he reinstated rather the practice of tithing. Mm -hmm. He reinstated the practice of tithing of giving a tenth of one's income to the priests and the Levites so that they could be free to give God and minister to the people. The people responded the text says immediately and generously. God's work needs the support of God's people. Your tithes and your offerings is a major important part that God's work might continue here on this earth. Amen. It continues through, through the mission work you do, through evangelism, uh, through paying the light bills, and through keeping this place open. Tithes and it, it, it contributes uh, uh, to the work of our God. So God's work, God's work needs the support of his people. The question is, does God, re does God receive a regular percentage of our income? You can say mine. You don't have to get it of my income. Make it personal. You know I'm talking about your neighbor next next time. I get hurt. Right. Concerned about you for the man. Generosity makes our giving delightful to God. It brings about joy to God, giving to God. How different the church would be today if all believers we got a vast amount of believers that are claiming that they believe. So you got a whole lot of them claiming, they claiming they believe, but they don't really believe nowhere. They say they believe. 
but their actions speak louder than their yes. words. Amen. 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 See, see, see what I mean? So we won't go there. So, uh, 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 so, so, how different the church would be if, if all believers would constantly would follow this path to present God with His first fruit. Amen. You remember the guy, the man in the Bible that he he had built barn, built barn, and he stored up his seed and everything yeah. in the barn. Yeah. Then he got he got over excited. He got happy about what he had. He looked around in his house or looked around on his lot and he said, "Oh, I got all of this and I and I got more coming in. What I need to do now." is build bigger bones. I, I already got plenty, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to build a mass. I'm going to build a, a humongous bone. I'm, I'm going I'm to go bigger. I'm going to build a, a bigger bone that I might be able to store all this. And the Bible says, you fool. You fool. Your life is required of you to this. So don't be so concerned about how much you have. Mm -hmm. Just be concerned how you use what you got. Oh my God. And that you use what you got mm -hmm. to bless God yeah. and to be a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. You see, he didn't bless you just to bless yourself. Yeah. He blessed you yeah. that you might bless me. Yeah. You might bless her. You might bless him. Yeah. You might bless somebody else. And guess what? When you do that, he said, I'm going to give you more. Yeah. I'm going to increase your territory. Yeah. Yeah. You want your territory to be increased? Then start opening up your hand yeah. and stop closing it up like a fist. Yeah. Open up your hand and listen. That's the only way you're going to receive. Yeah. Open up uh -huh. and let him yeah. come in. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God for the people of God. We give God praise and honor this morning for his word. Certainly this was a text that I struggled with. And you know. Oh, you know, right at some things you wonder whether you should preach and whether you should. But you gotta obey the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 So, I'd rather obey the Holy Spirit than man. So it's, it's God that I've got the answer to. So as long as I'm pleasing Him, I'm okay. All right. This morning, as we come to our in the mouth, morning service. Perhaps I have someone this morning under the sound of my voice that don't know the Lord in the part of their sin and they wish to have a closer walk or they wish to be saved. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Because with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So if you confess, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, believe in your heart, repent of your sin, and turn it all over to him, in no wise will he cast you out. So we are excited this morning about the word of God, how it's being carried out, and how we read the word of God, and how we come to an understanding of simply a part of the word of God. Because we realize that we have not even scratched the surface. We've only understood it in part. Yes. But we thank God that he has promised that there will be a day understand it in its entirety. But until then, we have to settle with what we have. And we have to work toward the goal of a higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So if there be anyone under the sound of my voice that don't know the Lord in the part
Dr. Lynn says, if you're watching by the way of, of Facebook, internet, or you're listening by way of conference call, we ask you to just lift up your hand to the Lord and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And if you do it like that, God will forgive you of your sins, of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then perhaps there's someone under the sound of my voice listening by way of internet or conference call. They don't have a church home. They are looking for a church home. We invite you to join us here at Union, 1203 Pine Street. The address, the phone number is on the website. You call the number in. I guarantee someone will get back to you. We believe that it don't matter how far you might be. You might be at a distance from the church. But we believe that God can reach you right where you are. So if you will call on him, if you will call on him in earnest, he's going to answer your prayer. And before we go to our, give our closing prayer this morning, we want to thank God that as I look around the sanctuary here this morning, I see Sister Claire here with us this morning. I think she, God has healed her body. Yes, yes, yes. And she has returned back to us. Yes, yes. And we thank God for her return. We thank God for everything that was done yes. to bring about the healing yes. of her body. Not only that, as Lady Young and First Lady has already requested prayer for Mom Lil, that she is in the hospital. We we'll continually lift her up and her family. As they go through this time of testing. And also, I have received a prayer request from uh, Sister Connie uh, Hudson Brown. She wants us to pray for her friend, Marshall Davis. He's back in the hospital. Um, and he's going to have surgery April the 26th. So we want to lift him up this morning. We want to lift him up. And we thank God and we praise God for all things. We thank God again as I look and I see Sister Renata. God has brought her back to us. And we thank God for her travel. She grew in the atmosphere, how God protected and kept her plain. So let us pray. Father God, this morning we thank you most of all for being God. We thank you. God, that you loved us so, that your love came down to over 2,000 generations, and that your love touched us through your one and only son, Jesus, that he was an example, that he was our example of how we should live and how we should carry out your ministry in this world. God, we thank you for delivering Sister Clara back to us. We thank you, God, this morning for delivering, oh God, Sister Renata over the dangerous highway. We thank you, oh God, that you are touching Sister Lillian right now. We don't know how, we don't know when you're going to do it, but we believe, God, that you're going to do it. So we're going to leave it into your hands. Yes. And not only God her, but we thank God for Sister Mother Carrigan, yes. our oldest member, God. We thank God for how you have given her the longevity of life yes. and how you are constantly putting a pep in her step. Yes. So God, we pray right now that you will continue to shower your blessings yes. over your people. Continue to bless our going in and our coming out. Bless us when we go down and when we rise up. Bless us when we are in disarray, when we feel like our joy is gone. Bless us even then. Give us that strength, that endurance to hold on just a little while longer. Realizing that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and that they mount up with the wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Teach us, Master. 
Jesus, dear master, how to wait on you. How to wait until our change comes. Bless us, God, as only you can do. We trust you. We love you. We adore you this morning. We give you the highest praise for your worth of all honor and all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First fruits and God's possessions because they're already his, but we need to be obedient and give back to him. Just 10%. So we thank God for the word of this morning. Thank God for Pastor Young being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we thank God for Lady Young. Amen. Um, for both of you. Continue, we continue to lift you up each and every day, each and every week, every hour, every minute. Continue to lift you up. That God will continue to bless you. Amen. And to raise you up. And to be obedient as you are. So we thank God for you, our shepherd. Amen. Amen. Our announcements, please remember that uh, Bible studies Tuesdays at uh, 12 noon and 6 p.m. by calling in on the prayer line. Uh, Wednesday prayer line is open at 6 a.m. and at 12 noon. Uh, today, the Jolly Timers will meet immediately after morning worship. Also today, the men's ministry will be having donuts and coffee out there for us. So please remember to stop by, and I believe they have a donation box out there also. <laughs> so amen, be a blessing, amen. 
Um, that's today, right after morning worship. Um, April the 28th, which is a Wednesday, I believe, the worship committee will meet via the prayer line at 6 p.m. This Thursday. Is this Thursday? Okay, Thursday. Worship committee will meet via the prayer line at 6 p.m. April the 30th, uh, April the 29th, Pastor Spiritual Moment via Zoom at 6.30. That's on Friday evening at 6.30. Um, Zoom information will be sent to everyone uh, shortly. Um, Saturday, April the 30th, United Women in Faith will meet at Trinity United Methodist Church Pavilion at 9 a.m. That's over on the Mount Carmel Road. Um, and that's at 9 a.m. If you're attending, please see Sister um, Marie or Sister Rosemary. Let them know. Let them know um, by today, actually. Yeah. Yes. And please, if you are attending, please wear your pink United Methodist women. They know it's women in faith now, but please remember to wear your pink t-shirts to that event. Um, and May 2nd, Brotherhood Choir will rehearse at 6 p.m. That's a Monday evening, and they will sing on May the 8th, which is Mother's Day, I believe. Um, May the 4th, you, the United Methodist Women in Faith, or United, Methodist, United Women in Faith, will meet at 6 p.m. via the prayer line, program, uh, program page number 63, led by yours truly, Sister Kim Anderson, and uh, Ruth and Felicia Beal. On May the 8th, uh, Mother's Day, come celebrate Mother's Day with us. May the 14th, United Methodist Men will meet at 8 a.m. at the diner for the <coughs> monthly um, fellowship. Um, and, oh, they're going to meet with the United Methodist Women also, uh, and the group leaders. That's on. So the women will be joining the men at the Saturday morning breakfast, okay? <laughs> Just the executive body of the United Methodist. United Women in Faith. It's hard to get used to. Um, I believe that's all. Please remember your offering envelopes. Place them in the um, uh, basket as you come in. Or if you need assistance, please see one of the pastors. Next Sunday, I believe, is Scholarship Sunday. Do you have something you want to say on the yeah. Scholarship Sunday. Next, next uh, Sunday, there will be a rally. Please remember to bring your offerings for that. That would be a special envelope for that. Our prayer list, okay, Brother Robert? Uh, yesterday they had a, a United Methodist Men District meeting, and uh, the name's been changed, but I forgot what they told me. <laughs> 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 I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <United> <laughs> <in faith? laughs> and also, uh, Jimmy Reed, uh, District uh, President, has been there for 10 years, so he's stepping down. And the new president is our own, Lamont Spate, with the new oh, district oh. president. Oh, amen. 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 we have this week because next Sunday is May 1st, so we'll do May next week. But the one day birthday we have this week is on the 26th, uh, Alan Trader. Amen. Okay. Are there any other announcements? Have a blessed day. I understand it's going to be a beautiful day, so enjoy the day and have a blessed day. Yes. 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 The education committee, if there are any graduates that are here or in, uh, associated with Unity Church, please get me the names that can be from high school, middle school, college, whatever, or need those as soon as possible.
Amen. Praise Christ. We thank God for all of us here. Um, Sister um, Marie, Father God, we thank you this morning for all the time. 
tithes and offerings that has been given for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. We thank you, O oh God, for your servants who were obedient in their tithing and their giving. And God, we pray for an increase that you will restore unto them abundantly. You promised it in your word, God. So, so we can put you to the test. So we believe, God, your word. So we're going to stand on your word. So we thank you, God, for the tithes and offerings that have been given for the building of your kingdom. Now the benediction. Believe where you have not seen. Our hearts will lead the way. Trust where you have reason to doubt. Our souls will lead us home. Hope where you have cause to despair. Our lives will know joy and peace. So then go with God's blessings. Amen. Amen.